Cessationism is worldliness. Let me explain it to you. You've got Rene Descartes, cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. In an effort to defend Christianity from some of its critics, he begins with his epistemological presupposition. Where will I start? I think, therefore I am. So the two founding, if, if you look at this like a Jenga game, the first two pieces that get laid down in something called the Modernistic Enlightenment Project, individualism and rationalism. I think, that's it. I'm an individual, and my mind, my brain, the three pounds of meat between my ears, that is the essence of what it means to possess the imago Dei, to be the image and likeness of God. Out of that, what invariably comes is the modern enlightenment project based upon individualism and rationalism. Now, uh, out of this comes as well skepticism. After a while, you start reading in the Bible, Jesus walked on water? You start becoming skeptical of supernatural claims. So guys like William Barclay come along and say, well, maybe he's walking on the shore of the water. And it looked like he was walking on the water. We're trying to find ways to explain away what the Bible says plainly. Because it doesn't fit cleanly within a modernistic, rationalistic uh, paradigm of thinking. So in that way, Christians start thinking more like Hume than C.S. Lewis. Right. Hume is really the modern rationalistic thinker who set in motion opposition to the supernatural, to the miraculous. So it starts with rationalism, individualism as part of modernism. This leads to skepticism, right? If there is a God, then God created the world. And to use the language of Al Pacino and the devil's advocate, he's now an absentee landlord, and that he's left us here and he's governing life as we know it by a set of laws. But he's so sovereign that he's gone. He's not transcendent and imminent, just gone. What happens then is the assumption is made that none of these natural laws can be violated. Therefore, the supernatural is impossible, if not unlikely. This plays itself out in three ways. Number one, there's atheism. There is no God, there is no supernatural, there's nothing beyond the physical material world that can be objectively tested and retested according to scientific methodology. There is a vestige of modernism that tries to accommodate a spiritual aspect and it becomes deism. Where there is a God, but this God is not involved in our world, he doesn't break in and violate natural law, the supernatural is not possible. This is Thomas Jefferson who sits down in the White House with a set of scissors and cuts all the miracles out of the Bible and publishes something called the philosophy of Jesus Christ. This includes Unitarians. This includes very liberal mainline so-called Christian denominations who are basically deists. There is a God, he's far away, he doesn't have anything to do with us, and the miracles can all be explained away. They're primitive, superstition, myth, misunderstanding. So it goes to atheism, deism, and this will be controversial, cessationism. Now you know why I haven't said this publicly. I'm not sure I have a helmet big enough to deal with it. I'm going to get battered a lot. But I believe the result of modernistic worldliness in Christian form is hard cessationism. And that is saying God could do a miracle, but he doesn't and he won't. But he could. So within that, God's not really speaking. God's not really working. And the supernatural gifts are not in operation. Healing, revelation, speaking in tongues, those kinds of things, they're over in the God used to box. Even though I was reading this book that said he was the same yesterday, today, and forever. 